I wanted to see if ChatGPT could make a video game, so I asked it to code Tetris. But there is a catch. I'm not gonna write a single line of code. ChatGPT has to do all of that. I will simply copy paste it over. This could be a disaster. First thing I did was setting up some custom instructions. Then I told it, your task is to code the legendary game Tetris. ChatGPT didn't waste any time, instantly giving me a detailed 10 step plan to build Tetris. It even included the first blocks of code. Slight problem though, I didn't have Unity installed. It's been 6 years since I coded a video game from scratch, so this will be fun. Luckily the install process was quite simple, and after 15 minutes I was in. ChatGPT told me to watch some Unity tutorials, but let's be honest, ain't nobody got time for that. And so before I knew it, I was creating my first C Sharp script. VS Code wanted some packages and extensions so I installed those. In the meantime, ChatGPT was already cooking up instructions for the grid system. See, every game of Tetris needs to have a grid, and that isn't just for the blocks to align nicely, it's mainly for tracking which spots are full. I took the code the AI gave me, pasted it into VS Code and tested if it works. As you can see, we now have a playing field, albeit slightly off-center. Fixing this was easy, but I was already excited for the next step. Sprites. We need sprites for the 7 tetromino shapes, a sprite for the border and also a sprite for the background grid, otherwise you can't really see your position. So I took some textures from the web, polished them inside of Photoshop and opened them in Unity. And just like that, we have the 7 Tetris shapes finished. Here's when I made a rookie mistake though. I didn't stick to a single graphic style. So the tetrominoes were different from the grid, which was different from the border. This created a lot of chaos visually. It always looked like something was misaligned. I spent hours fixing this in Photoshop, since I couldn't decide which textures to go with. I'm actually embarrassed how long this took, but I finally had sprites that matched. Now that we have all the graphics, we need to make the tetrominoes actually spawn. Oh, and we also need a way to control control the blocks, otherwise they just fall right through the floor. And so ChatGPT got back to doing unpaid labor and spit out some new C Sharp scripts. Now would you look at that? We have something that looks and feels like the actual Tetris. By the way, all the sprites, prefabs, scenes and scripts will be available inside of my community, including all the other software and code I built in my videos. So if you are serious about AI and want to be among the people who are building the future, make sure to join, link in the description. Next I asked the AI to update the movement script so that we can't go past the border. This was quite easy, just adding a few variables. But here is where ChatGPT began to struggle. I didn't realize it at first, but there was a whole stew of problems brewing under the surface. First off, the spawn positions weren't on the grid, which was very frustrating to look at. The border detection was also messed up. The tetrominoes were being stopped, but they could easily clip into the border. Oh, and I didn't tell you about the rotation. When you play Tetris, you have the ability to rotate as you're falling. ChatGPT included rotation in the movement script, however it was completely messed up. All of these issues could be traced back to one core mistake I made trusting the AI way too much. See, up to this point, I was blindly following ChatGPT's instructions. After all, that's the point of this video, to see if AI can code Tetris. But I underestimated the importance of my own role in this project. I needed to be in charge of the decisions and only use ChatGPT as a tool to write the code. So I chose to take a step back and start with fresh empty scripts. I had to make sure I thoroughly understood every little detail. But even though I told ChatGPT to slow down and to explain every single step, it still had a tendency to rush things. It always wanted to do everything in a single prompt. I solved that by updating the custom instructions where I told it to chill out a bit and by switching to a brand new chat, which also made the responses a lot faster. Since some of the issues were caused by the old prefabs, I decided to get rid of those as well. I created the new prefabs out of individual 2D squares. This allows me to have complete control of where the pivot point is. That way we don't end up with sketchy rotation like last time. Before the tetrominoes were rotating around the geometric center, but that doesn't work when everything is on a grid. It only worked with the big square tetromino since that one is perfectly symmetrical. I mean even GPT-3 could figure that one out. 
What? At this point, I realized just how much I appreciate the art of game development. The average person looks at Tetris and sees falling blocks and maybe a score. But when a game developer looks at Tetris, he sees collision detection, line clearing, spawning system, rotation, movement, wall kicks, you get the point. A good rule of thumb when creating games is to expect everything to take five times longer than your first estimate. So if you think something's gonna take an hour, it's gonna take about five. And boy, was that true for this project. ChatGPT didn't really have any awareness of what was going on or what needed to be done next. That's how I learned to think twice before writing any prompt, because even a simple question could completely alter the direction of the entire project. And it was at this point when I started to feel stuck. Every time ChatGPT gave me a solution to one of the problems, it created two new ones. I even considered scrapping this video idea altogether. Maybe the current AI simply isn't advanced enough to code Tetris from scratch. Perhaps I overestimated ChatGPT and its abilities, but giving up isn't in my nature. And the harder something is, the more limited the competition and the greater the reward. It was time to take complete control over the direction of the project, otherwise it would never get finished. To fix the spawning issue, I manually adjusted the prefabs so that each tetromino was perfectly aligned with the grid. I also got rid of the old border and grid sprites and I used tiled draw mode to create a 10 by 20 playing field that perfectly aligned with the unity grid. Next, I told ChatGPT to write a new script for the spawning. The script has an empty array into which I had to drag in the seven tetromino prefabs. It then randomly selects one of the tetrominos and spawns at the predefined spawn position. The collision detection ChatGPT came up with was a bit too restrictive. It stopped the movement one block before the border, which is certainly better than it clipping through but it still needed to be fixed. Simply reducing the size of the overlap box by 0.5 units solved the problem. For the first time in a while, we were making solid progress. And I started to believe that AI could actually code a basic version of Tetris. I even managed to implement wall kicks, a mechanic that checks whether moving or rotating would go outside the border. And if so, it kicks you one unit in the other direction to prevent border clipping. But as soon as it came time to implement a spawner game object things took a turn for the worst. Having ChatGPT to write the spawning script was quite easy, but making it actually work was a whole different story. First, I added a custom tag to the bottom border and to all Tetromino prefabs. This will let us detect when the current Tetromino has landed. However, what ChatGPT did next almost drove me insane. For the spawning to work properly, we needed the two scripts to communicate. So the AI told me to create a public variable in the Tetromino script where I should drag the the spawner game object into. But Unity didn't let me do that. It kept saying type mismatch. To which ChatGPT replied, oh, you shouldn't drag the spawner in there, you should drag the spawning script component. Of course, when I tried that, it didn't work. I still got the type mismatch message. Luckily, the AI knew what to do. When I described the problem, it responded with, I see, you are trying to drag in the script component, but actually, you should drag in the spawner game object. I wish I was making this up. ChatGPT refused to accept that neither of these two options worked. This went on for a good hour and it was a very painful hour. But right as my head was about to explode, the AI out of nowhere just gave me the solution. The answer was quite simple. Unity does not allow game objects from the scene to be referenced directly in prefab assets. So why did you tell me to do that like 10 times, you dumb AI? Anyways, now that the two scripts can communicate with each other, it was time to make the spawning actually work. Disabling the movement when the Tetromino has has landed was shockingly easy. But when that happens, a new Tetromino should spawn, which wasn't the case. I was using the exact script ChatGPT gave me, and I was doing everything it told me, yet no matter what I tried, I could not get new Tetrominos to spawn. And that's when I had a moment of brilliance. Normally, I would start describing the problem to ChatGPT and follow its instructions. I mean, that's what I did this entire time, but not anymore. For the first time, I decided to trust my own intuition. I looked at the code and I felt that something was off. We had a method that should be spawning new tetrominos, but when this overlap check code detects an upcoming collision, it changes the has landed boolean to true and that disables all movement, meaning the tetromino would never actually collide with the bottom border and so a new tetromino would never spawn. My idea was to simply copy these two lines of code
code, delete that useless method and paste those lines right before the movement gets disabled. I save the changes, switch to Unity and hit play. And this is what happened next. Oh my god. It actually works. <laughs> no way, dude. So, can AI code Tetris without human help? Hell no! Everything from this video, all the code, prefabs and sprites will be available inside of my community. So if you want to actually take part in the AI revolution and not miss out like most people will, consider joining. First link in the description.